Genotype VR has everything that you would expect in an immersive sim game. Massive facility to explore that is overrun with hostile creatures? Check. Everyone is perished or worse, except for one person who talks to you over the radio? Check. For some reason, everyone who lived there used to record journals and audio logs and just leave them randomly scattered around? Check. There are locked doors with keys you have to find, management of your limited resources, many different weapons to find, or rather grow, and a little mystery as to why everything has gone so wrong, and tons of different obstacles and enemies to overcome as you scavenge and fight through this dangerous secret Antarctic facility. Except all of this is in virtual reality and nowhere else. Built from the ground up for VR, Genotype is a pioneer of a game that is tackling an expansive and expensive genre for the first time natively to virtual reality headsets. It's an ambitious project to tackle for such a small studio. The question is though, is Genotype VR a good example of the immersive sim genre? Does it really succeed in bringing the immersive sim to virtual reality? Let's find out. Starting out, let's talk about the most prevalent element in any immersive sim game, the element that all other pieces of the game revolve around, and that's the combat. In Genotype VR, you'll be fighting the aliens that have taken over the Antarctic research base that you find yourself in, and you'll be fighting a lot of them. There will be loads of them the first time you enter an area, and even cleared out rooms can sometimes spawn more for you to take on. When aliens spawn in a room, the doors will lock until you've dealt with them. There is even an in-universe explanation for this. Something about an aggressive pheromone locking system that automatically closes the doors, which is a nice touch. So you can't just run around and kite enemies through rooms forever. You'll need to stand and fight them in one location. This is a very good thing because Genotype VR's combat system is very dependent on movement. The ability to move around freely is your greatest offensive and defensive tool. That is because there are no hitscan enemies and cover is rarely a factor. Enemies will either try to close into melee range to hit you with their claws, or far more commonly shoot slow moving projectiles at you. So your ability to strafe out of the way is really important. Every fight is way easier when you have space to move around. The game generally gives you this space. The map design leans into how the combat works by giving you the maneuvering room that you need, but this also leads to combat that depends on you constantly strafing around enemy attacks or moving away to keep your distance. The factor that decides whether or not you win or lose is mostly your ability to play keep away and avoid getting cornered. Whether or not you like this movement heavy combat in your VR game is really up to you, but combat in Genotype is still generally enjoyable and doesn't get super old. However, the constant slow strafing around projectiles does feel a little overly artificial. This is especially true during the boss encounters in this game, which are just the usual aliens, but scaled up and with some smaller enemies added in. The bosses have huge health pools and feel very bullet spongy, which is fine, they are bosses after all. But needing to constantly strafe around them while attacking made the issues with the strafe heavy combat in this game very apparent, where normally the shorter length of a fight disguises it somewhat. The game also throws in new enemy types and more dangerous variants of those enemies at a pretty consistent pace. Unfortunately, they all still involve strafing around them. The combat seemed a little easy at first, but it does get significantly harder as you progress through the base. And at the same time, your arsenal of tools becomes larger and more dangerous. Your first and most obvious tools are your weapons. You start with the Spitter, a slow firing but heavy hitting weapon that does area of effect damage. Then you soon acquire more, like the Grubber, which is a short range tentacle that can punch or grab onto enemies. You can deal good damage with this thing by grabbing an enemy and then ripping your hand away, which is a novel weapon for a VR game that has you using a different hand movement in combat than just pointing and shooting. Very creative stuff. You've also undoubtedly noticed that all of these weapons also aren't weapons in the traditional sense, and are rather creatures that grow out of your hand. This is a great way to explain how you could walk around with a huge arsenal, and also some cool flavor to the game overall. Not all of them are just for combat, but we'll get into exploration and utility a little later. These weapons are varied and more or less useful in different situations and enemy types. You might end up using weapons that do splash damage against swarms of smaller enemies, or a weapon that rapidly deals damage to a single enemy against big boss monsters. There is no one weapon that is definitively more powerful than the rest, and that is a good thing. You'll naturally be inclined to use different weapons to suit different combat situations. Now for your other combat tools, your items. You'll find a lot of different items while scavenging the base, most importantly healing syringes, but there are more interesting ones, like rockets you can shoot with your offhand, or syringes that make you invisible or extremely fast or give you a shield. It can be difficult to use these items during combat because you'll constantly be moving while accessing your inventory to avoid getting hit, but they're so powerful that it's a reasonable added challenge in order to be able to use them. 
The one downside to items is that if you're at all stingy and hang on to too many of them, your inventory will quickly fill up. Still, this could be intentional, because running out of inventory space directly incentivizes you to actually use these items instead of just hanging onto them forever. A little more inventory space would have been nice though. So the combat's pretty good, but what about the parts of an immersive sim that really make it an immersive sim? The world, the exploration, the atmosphere. Well, you'll be happy to hear that there's a lot of world to explore. Each wing of this strange complex that you find yourself in is pretty big with lots of nooks and crannies. Exploration is well rewarded with more resources and tokens for upgrades, and it always feels exciting and worth it to uncover a new hallway or room. There are even a few puzzles to solve or key codes to discover and use to get tons of extra loot. The biggest downside of the exploration is that for huge chunks of the game, there's very little variety. Being outside in the Antarctic winds is amazing, and the storms surrounding the facility look truly impenetrable and impressive. Unfortunately, you'll be spending most of your time indoors, and the practically identical look of the hallways, offices, maintenance rooms, and laboratories that you'll find yourself in gets kind of old. Some rooms do have this beautiful and fascinating alien growth covering them to add some variety, but you'll definitely be looking at the same sorts of industrial sterile walls and floors a lot. Though the various tools you'll use to assist your exploring are still very cool, like the Brain Link, a creature that spawns an egg that hatches a tiny alien that you become. It somehow absorbs your entire body and then hatches back into a fully grown human being again once you press another button. This might not make a lot of sense, but it is unique and useful for fitting into tight ventilation shafts or bridging gaps by launching eggs over them. Even deep into the game, Genotype VR throws some new challenges and tools your way that are completely unexpected, but welcome new challenges. Like one section that suddenly introduces a swimming mechanic, it's these sudden new changes in exploration, puzzling, and navigation that keep Genotype fresh all the way through the end. So, exploration takes a little thinking as well, but hardly ever feels obtuse. Even if you do get lost, there are in-game objectives and a map to help you out, but no on-screen markers. There's a dialogue between your character and the mysterious man on the other side of the radio, which will add context and character to your next goal, while their conversations are tense and mysterious at first. Please let this be a radio. We call it the Exoscope. <gasps> Who are you? No time for introductions. We need to make sure you don't end up like your colleague. They quickly develop a rapport, and it's fun to listen in on their conversations. Wow. Showers. Plural. We only have one at the weather station. <laughs> Luckily, someone didn't want to work with a crowd of scientists sharing a single shower. <laughs> Your character and the man on the radio really are the soul of this game, and seeing what happens to them and where they end up was a big motivator moving forward. There are some light jokes and their contributions to the story unfolding in front of your eyes and hands is pleasant and charismatic. Your mysterious helper explains the strange place that you find yourself in and gives much needed context to what is going on and what you're doing. Genotype VR doesn't hold your hand even with these helping nudges, but if you keep looking around and uncovering new areas, you will inevitably find what you need next to complete your objective. What is your objective anyway? Luckily, your friend over the radio has a solution to the aliens roaming the facility and the plague that you carry within you. Did I mention you're also infected with an alien plague in this game? Well, you are. To cure it and get rid of the creatures, you will have to collect nine DNA samples from across the facility to engineer a solution to destroy them all. So you go to each wing and collect the samples. There's more after that, of course, but I won't spoil what happens next for you here. The story of Genotype VR isn't groundbreaking stuff, but it's very serviceable and gives enough color to the setting through dialogue and the journals scattered around the levels. Now back to the samples. They also function as upgrade points for your weapons, and you can also upgrade yourself with tokens found around the facility. You can upgrade this way three times, which unlocks some more general buffs and a maximum health increase. This is where the immersive sim nature of Genotype VR shines again, and why that's such a focus of this review. What's an immersive sim without the ability to choose how you want to approach each situation? Well, Genotype VR doesn't give you an insane amount of customizability, but enough to make you feel like you're choosing upgrades that fit your playstyle. Each weapon has a few to choose from, and even just choosing which weapons to upgrade is a choice within itself. Since I was personally attached to the Grubber, I decided to upgrade it first with a health leeching ability that also increased its damage. Oh, and the Swarmer too, with a faster fire rate. While there are situations in which each weapon you can grow from your hand is useful, there are also many chances to pick favorites. If you're ever unhappy with your decisions or want to try a new playstyle, you can redo all of your upgrade choices at any time. 
The freedom to mix and match your choices at will is good to have, and changing up which weapons you will favor and how you use them is a real mark of an immersive sim game. Crafting and resource management are also typical hallmarks of the immersive sim genre. There's a crafting resource that you can collect by defeating enemies or finding capsules of the stuff hidden around. I found that I had an absolute ton of it pretty early on in the game and never ran anywhere close to empty on it. So strict resource management wasn't much of an issue, though the grubber has infinite ammo in case you run out completely, it would be pretty difficult to run out of resources, and this one resource that you get can print basically anything that you need at an upgrade station. Healing items, buff items, rockets you can shoot from your offhand, and ammo of course. While Genotype BR doesn't utilize resource scarcity to ratchet up the tension, the abundance of resources also gives you a lot of latitude and options to pick your playstyle by choosing which items to create and carry in your inventory. Overall, Genotype BR has turned out to be a fantastic VR game, and I enjoyed it all the way through to the end. If you love immersive sims, then you should definitely give this game a try. In fact, if you're dying for a new and novel single-player VR game, then Genotype VR is a good choice for any VR gamer who has liked what they've heard in this review. It's a game that makes you want to just explore one more room to see what is next, until the next thing you know, your headset's out of battery and you have to take it off. So, Genotype VR is a fun game that I'd recommend, but is it truly the first VR immersive sim? I'd say so. Your vast choices of items to use and upgrades to take can change how you approach enemy encounters, though you'll have to do a lot of strafing regardless of what you pick. Your options mostly come down to weapon selection, and different weapons do play differently. Genotype VR reminded me a lot of the remake of the original System Shock in its pacing and exploration, and I'd say that's a good thing. This feeling was deeply ingrained by other elements like the audio logs, text logs, and lockboxes that lead back to the start of the immersive sim genre. Genre definitions are more up to the community than individual reviewers such as myself, so whether or not Genotype VR counts as the first VR immersive sim is up to you. But like I said, if you'd ask me, I'd say it does. This has been Reality Remake. Thanks for watching, and if you made it this far, leave a like and uh, maybe subscribe if you want more reviews like this. I'd appreciate it. Have a good one and enjoy.